Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to cover Green's Theorem. Now what is Green's Theorem? Let's think about the fundamental theorem of calculus that we saw in Calculus 2 for the time being. So for the fundamental theorem of calculus, one way to think about it is that it says suppose we have a function, capital F, and we know its values at some input B, we also know its value at an input A, and we're to look at the difference of these two function values. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, it says that that difference of the function at these two points is related to the value of another function along all of those points in the interval between these two endpoints. And so that is, it's related to the integral from a to b of this other function, the derivative of capital F at, let's say, x dx. So this is quite a remarkable relationship because what it says is that the value of some function at a and b, the endpoints of this interval, is related to the values of another function over the whole interval. And in particular, what I mean by the values of that other function, I mean the integral of that other function over the whole interval. Because when I look at this statement, this expression on the right, this is a statement about some function, in this case f prime, and its values over the whole interval from a to b. Whereas on the left, this is a statement about some function, in this case capital F, and its values at the endpoints. And the fundamental theorem of calculus says that these two quantities are related. The value of the function f prime over the whole interval, or the values of the function f prime over the whole interval, in particular the integral, is related to the values of this other function at the endpoints. And it's this idea that's going to extend in what we call Green's theorem to this notion of double integrals and line integrals. For this, we're going to think about this picture in the top right hand corner. What is shown there is this curve C. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's an orientation on this curve C. There's a little arrow there. Basically, the curve C is going around this domain D in a counterclockwise fashion. That's what we refer to as a positive orientation for the curve. Uh, the idea is that a curve is positively oriented if it's a simple closed curve and the region it encloses is always on the left hand side of the curve as you wander in the direction of increasing the value of the parameter. So in this case as I move in this direction along the curve, the domain D is always on my left hand side. So that would be a positive orientation. As opposed to if I was to walk around it in the other direction, the region D would be on my right hand side. So I've got a positively oriented curve C. I've got the region that it's bounding inside, which is D. And it turns out that there is a relationship between the values of some function on the boundary as compared to the values of another function on the domain D. And what do I mean by the values of the function? Well, in this case, I mean the integral of the function along the curve C versus the integral of another function over the domain D. And so the precise statement is, let C be a positively oriented, piecewise smooth, simply closed curve. So we have a picture like in the top right corner. Let D be the region bounded by C. P and Q are going to be those components of the vector field that we're going to be integrating um, in, in terms of doing a line integral. So we'll assume that P and Q have continuous partial derivatives on that domain D. Then what we get is a relationship between two integrals. The line integral of the vector field around the curve C is equal to the two-dimensional integral of this different function over the region D. And if we compare back with the fundamental theorem of calculus, what it's saying is I've got the integral around the boundary of a region, and that is equal to the integral of a different function 
over the whole region. What is this different function? Well, to make the analogy with the fundamental theorem of calculus, this new function that I've got should be some sort of derivative of whatever the original function was. The original function was this vector field made up of p and q's. This new function I'm integrating should be some sort of derivative of that. And we can see it in some sense it is. It's made up of partial derivatives of the vector field. And so for Green's theorem, we are always interested in integrating over a closed curve, a simple closed curve. And so for that, we generally use this notation of the integral symbol with a little circle on the integral sign itself just to indicate that c is a simple closed curve and this is a line integral around a simple closed curve in the positively oriented direction so the region is always sitting to the left. So that's Green's theorem. The line integral is related to the region integral. If you want to think about the analogy with the fundamental theorem of calculus Fundamental theorem of calculus relates a one-dimensional integral with a difference of two values. Maybe we can think of that as a zero-dimensional integral, whereas this relates a two-dimensional integral to a one-dimensional integral. That's what Green's theorem does, so it's sort of a step up in dimensions. Let's have a look at an example. So we're going to use Green's theorem to evaluate this line integral where c is the square with sides given there. So let's get a sketch for our region d. So it's a square, x goes out to the value of 1, y goes up to the value of 1, and there is our region we are interested in. The curve, oh I shouldn't say there's the region we are interested in, no region was given, we are just given the curve, but to make the comparison with Green's theorem we're going to be interested in doing an integral over a 2D region. So I'll put in purple here, this is our curve. That's our curve C. So there's C. And I've oriented it in the positive direction, meaning that as I wander in the direction I've drawn the arrow, the region D is always on my left-hand side. The region that is enclosed by this simple closed curve is always on my left-hand side. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We want to evaluate the integral around this curve C, e to the y dx plus 2x e to the y dy. So from this we can read off what our p and q values are. So that's the first component of our vector field. That's the second component of our vector field. So that's what we call p and q. So in other words, our vector field, just reading off from the integral, is made up of e to the y, 2 to the x, e to the y. And that's our p, and that's our q. What does Green's theorem tell us? Well, Green's theorem tells us that this one-dimensional integral, the integral around this curve c, is equivalent to integrating over the region d, so it's equivalent to a 2D integral. What is the integrand for the 2D integral? It's dq dx minus dp dy. And that's our area integral dA. Because we're integrating over this region d now in this integral, and that's a square going x going from 0 to 1, y going from 0 to 1, we can just write that down. dq dx dq dx is 2 e to the y, dp dy is e to the y, and then the x and y integrals can be done in any order. So maybe I'll go dx dy. And so there's Green's theorem. It says if I wanted to do the line integral, think about how I would have to do it. I'd have to integrate around the square, so that means I'd have to come up with parameterizations for each of the line segments, and I'd have to probably convert this to 4 individual line integrals coming up with parameterizations for each of those straight line segments that make up the square. But Green's theorem tells me I don't have to do that because I can get the same result by integrating over the 2D region D of this new function, this function that I got as derivatives of the original vector field. And so now we can finish off the calculation, integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, e to the y, dx, dy, 
So because this is now a separable integral, I can do the two integrals independently. It's the integral from 0 to 1 dx, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the y dy. The integral from 0 to 1 of uh, dx is just 1, and the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the y is e to the 1 minus e to the 0. And so our final answer is e minus 1. Okay, so that was an example of how we can use Green's theorem. I've got a line integral I want to compute. Rather than finding a parameterization for the curve C or multiple parameterizations, I instead integrate over the whole region D and convert it to a problem that we saw back in chapter 15, where we did double integrals. Let's have a look at another example. Let's use Green's theorem to evaluate this line integral for this vector field, where C consists of the arc of the curve, sine of x from 0, 0 to pi 0, and a line segment. So let's get this region sketched out, or this curve sketched out, and then the corresponding region. So we want one arc of a sine function, and that's going out to pi 0 from 0, 0. And then we want the line segment from pi 0 back to 0, 0. And so what I noticed from the drawing of this curve is that the region it encloses, so it's a simple closed curve, it encloses that region, the region is on the right hand side if I was to wander along in the direction of the arrows. So that means that this curve is not positively oriented. Positive orientation of this curve would go around in the other direction. So this is our curve C. What we would instead like to do is integrate, maybe I should do it the other way, integrate along a curve that goes in the other direction because this green curve is now positively oriented and that's the curve negative c. It's just the curve in the opposite direction. Okay, so what are we interested in doing? We want to integrate around the curve C of our vector field. The problem is to use Green's theorem we need a positively oriented curve. So what we will do is we will integrate along the curve negative C. And if we take the negative of that then that gives us the integral along the curve C. So that's just one slight adjustment that we have to do. And now by Green's theorem the integral along the curve negative c, I'm even going to put a little circle with an arrow on it for our integral science that says now this is a positively oriented uh, curve that I'm integrating along. So if by Green's theorem I've got that negative out front still, maybe I'll even color code that. That's the negative I got from essentially switching my direction of integration, that negative is still out front. And now by Green's theorem, that's equivalent to the double integral over the region D. There's our region D of dq dx minus dp dy dA. And what is Q and P? Well, we have our vector field that's given in the question itself. So that was e to the negative x plus y squared, e to the negative y plus x squared. This is our function p of xy. This is our function q of xy. And so this becomes the integral over the region D. So for integrating over the region D, I just use a double integral. In this case, I'll think about it as a vertically simple region. So I will integrate along the y direction first. And that means integrating along the y direction, I go from 0 up to the curve, sine of x, and then x goes from 0 to pi to sweep out that region. dq dx is 2x minus dq, dp dy is 2y, and that is dy dx. And so there is the integral we need to compute. This is a double integral. We've done these things in chapter 15. We convert them to iterated integrals, which are just two calculus two type integrals. So I will spare the details 
of the integral calculation. You can work on it on your own. And we get a final answer of negative 3 pi by 2. All right, so that's it for the first part of the videos for this section. I've split them up into a couple more parts. The next part is we will look at Green's theorem and do it in a different direction than we've done in the last two examples. These last two examples, we've set up a line integral and converted it to a double integral, an area integral. In the next video, we will look at trying to evaluate an area integral by converting it to a line integral. So we use Green's theorem in the opposite direction, and then we'll do an example of that. And then the two videos that follow are just two additional examples of Green's theorem and how we can use it in various contexts with various vector fields. So just more examples to put under our belt so that we get a feel for what Green's theorem can do for us. All right, see you in the next video.